Welcome back, scientists. I'm excited that you're joining me again. This is part three of lesson two. If you haven't already watched part one and two of lesson two, you should go back and watch those first because they are very important to what we'll be talking about. The title for this part of the lesson is Gathering Evidence from the Sim. So previously we looked at this picture that shows two claims. Claim one, which is that energy is transferred from the sun directly to the air, and claim two, which says energy is transferred from the sun to the surface and then to the air. Both claim one and two are trying to answer the question of how does air get energy, right? Um, so our sim investigation that we'll do right now will help us to determine which claim is more convincing. Okay, so in this part of the lesson, there are three things that, that we need to do. One, we need to make a prediction, and we need to make observations. That's the second thing. And then finally, we need to use our new evidence that we're going to gather from the sim to support our claim. What do you think will happen to the air after being heated for one minute? with a surface and with no surface. So you can make your prediction in your notebook. You could also just tell the person that you're doing this lesson with, a friend or someone who's at your house. You can jot your ideas down or just say them. And then you're gonna make some observations and my directions are just observe and record the results of your exploration. Did the temperature increase, decrease, or stay the same? And then finally, we'll take that and we'll write down in our science notebook which claim we think is best supported by the evidence that we've collected. So here's a data table that you can use to record your observations in your science notebook. There's a place for you to record the starting temperature, the final air temperature, and then you can subtract those to find the change and pause it for just a moment if you need to so that you can create this data table in your science notebook. You don't have to use a ruler or anything like that. You can just write it down. Okay, so the video, pause it now, and I'm going to keep going so that when you come back from unpaused, it's ready to go. Okay, so throughout this unit, we're going to be using the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Sim to help us learn more about why Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature is cooler than usual during El Nino years. So simulations are scientific models that scientists often use to make observations of things that they can't observe directly. There are a lot of things happening on Earth, and but the planet is so large we can't easily observe everything or measure them. And so although this model that we're going to be using isn't um, exactly like real life, we can use it to study what's actually happening as heat is moving around our planet on Earth. Okay, so to get to the sim, you'll log on to your Amplify account the way you would normally do that, um, going through Clever and then getting on. And then once you're there, click on the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate sim that looks like this with some, you know, water moving around past this continent. And once you open that up, you're going to open up the the surface test model. So let's do a little preview. The surface test model looks like this, and there's something that I want you to notice right away, which is that as soon as it starts, it just starts going. And so the first thing I always like to do when I open it up is I first hit the pause button, which will be right here, right here. This is the play button. And so you're going to hit the pause button and then just quickly hit this to reload it. And the default is to start with medium solar output. Let's leave it at that. That sounds perfect. And we only need to let this sim run for about one minute before we'll have enough evidence to support one or two, claim one or two. Okay, so if you have access to the sim, I would say stop this video right now go open it up and check it out and then come back and join us. If you don't have access to the sim, just stay on with me and I'll go ahead and walk you through it and we can record some evidence um, together. Okay, this is the sim and I've already moved it to the surface test and I have hit pause and then I reloaded it. So now everything's ready to go and You'll notice right away that the starting temperature of the air temperature above the surface is negative 10 degrees Celsius. So take a moment to record that. And then I'm going to switch to the no surface mode. And if I do that, the surface disappears. 
And you'll notice with this one that the air temperature is also negative 10 degrees Celsius. So record that. So now that I have my two starting points, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the surface and let's just hit play. And to speed it up, I'm going to go ahead and move it to times two. So it goes really, really fast. And when I look at this, I notice a couple of things right away, which is that the air temperature is increasing. And I'm going to stop it there. I think that was only about 30 seconds or so. But definitely we're seeing like an increase in the air temperature. So I'm going to record that my final air temperature, and you can write this down too. I'm just going to type it in my computer, is 18.6 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now let's switch over to the no surface. And again, you'll notice that it is starting at negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, and now I'm going to hit play. And guys, I did hit play. Is the temperature changing at all? I mean, it's not. You can see that it doesn't seem to be changing at all. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit pause now because I see that there isn't really any changes happening at all. Okay, so let's take a look at our results. So let's spend a little bit of time analyzing our results. This kind of math is a little bit tricky, so I am going to switch hats and be a math teacher for just a moment to help us understand subtracting negative numbers. Negative 10 degrees Celsius is actually... 10 numbers below zero. So to find the difference between a positive number, you actually have to go up 10 degrees just to get to zero. And then after that point, when you're at zero, you go up an additional 18.6 degrees. So the total change in our system is 28.6 degrees Celsius, which is actually quite a lot. With the air that had no surface, we had the same starting temperature and the same ending temperature in our computer model. We have a change in air temperature there of just zero degrees Celsius. So using this data, I want you to take a look at claim one a second time. Claim one has the picture where energy from the sun is heating the, the air directly. So considering how air gets energy, do you agree or disagree with this statement? The sun warms the air directly. So I would like for you to turn and talk to the person that you're watching this video with, whether it's a friend that you have gotten on your phone or someone in your home, and just tell them, what do you think? Do you agree with this or do you disagree with this? And what sort of evidence supports your idea? So pause the video for a moment, share your ideas. Okay, welcome back, scientists. The heating experiment and the sim both showed that when there is no surface, the air temperature does not increase as much. In our experiment that we had set up, we saw a small difference in the temperature with no surface and the one that had a surface. The sim showed that energy transfers from the sun to the surface first and then from the surface to the air. So this means that energy does not transfer directly from the sun to the air. This is an exciting moment because this is our very first key concept for our unit. And I hope that you're as excited as this girl is because this is an exciting moment. So the first key concept for this unit, and I absolutely think you should write this down in your notes, is energy from the sun is transferred to Earth's surface. Some of that energy is then transferred to the air above the surface. This is, this is so cool because what it shows is that energy from our star that's 150 million kilometers away just passes straight through the atmosphere to Earth, hits the surface of the Earth, and it starts to warm the surface of the Earth. And then the blanket of air that's around our planet is in direct contact with the Earth. And as the Earth gets warmer and warmer and warmer, energy transfers from the Earth's surface to the air. And that is so cool. Okay, this is the end of lesson two. And in lesson three, we have an exciting thing to discover together about how where you are on Earth 
could affect how much energy you're actually getting from the sun and how that's going to warm the air.